Hello there, my dear brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord and warm welcome to one and all of you. And I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it gives me a great pleasure. It's my joy. It's my pleasure. It's my privilege. And it's an honor <clears throat> to stay connected with the children of God. And we are the royal priesthood. And we are here to discuss from the word of God, meditate from the word of God. And word of God is life. It is the way. It is the truth. Why? Because word of God was with God. And the word became flesh. And his name is Jesus. Then technically, whenever we meditate the word of God, we are worshipping Jesus. Right? So, you don't have to specifically spend time in <clears throat> singing songs, hymns and stuff like that to worship Jesus. It's pretty much enough for you to meditate the word of God, analyze your lifestyle and get closer to him and do things that would please him. That's actually, that's the real meaning of you worshipping the Lord, right? Why? Because that's the kind of respect which the Bible demands for this Lamb of God who had shed his precious blood on the cross, purchasing you and me for a price which money cannot buy, which no righteous person's deeds cannot buy because the Bible says there is no goodness in the flesh of men. And whoever it may be and however righteous they could be, there is no way that they could um, match up to the divinity, right? In the blood of Jesus, right? And the divine power and the supreme power in the blood of Jesus. And the moment you're cleansed in this blood, you become like Jesus. You are righteous. All your sins of the past are erased, removed, wiped off. What a privilege, right? Have you heard any doctrines like this? You do nothing. Someone else is um, someone else is paying the price, and uh, it costs so much for them. They had to be bet, bruised, and broken, and uh, treated harshly, harassed, and uh, crucified. You know what it is to hang in three nails on the cross, and you know what it is to pierce the nail right into your palm. Do you know what it is to pierce that big nail, keeping your legs uh, together or maybe they separate the legs? I can't even imagine. Why? Because even simple things, they are not able to tolerate because we are living in such a impatient world and an impatient environment where tolerance, if it were to be taught also, people are not ready to learn. Why? Because there is impatience. There is so much of rage because the world is so fast and you just you just cannot wait, right? And in this world, people have no time to even imagine what Jesus went through. And that's why they continue to sin one side. And on the other side, if you see, they continue to misinterpret it and they live in misconception that where sin multiplies, grace multiplies and you continue to sin. And when if when you walk in these kind of dark situations and these kind of misinterpretations. What is the situation of your body, mind, spirit? And who is actually governing? No, brother, but I go to church. Yes, but you have not noticed your pastor is the false prophet the Bible is talking about. Your pastor is that wolf which is who has been clothed in uh, the sheep's clothing and he's standing there. Yeah, did I mention any name? Therefore, no reason for you to get offended or Look at me angrily. But it is time for you to wake up, brother. Yes, this is like a wake-up call, whistle-blowing or a whistleblower statement, which is important for you to realize, analyze, think, and judge correctly on whose side you are or who is leading you. Are you on God's side or are you on devil's side? Simple, no? If you are on side of God, then walk in godly manner. And be like God, behave like God, talk like God, walk like God, think like God, analyze like God. Yeah. Be supreme like God. But if you're on devil's side, go there, enjoy the wiles of the devil. Be fooled, be deceived and go get involved in every single possible thing that you could ever, uh, that one could ever be involved. Yeah. Get into tobacco, drug addiction, alcoholism, flirting, prostitution, adultery, idolatry. 
uh, and then you want to spread tant spread tantrums like no god is there it's all about our efforts it's it's all about what we think because we are you know uh, free thinkers there is a gang you know they are called as free thinkers i'm a free thinker they can think anything they can do anything they can wear anything and they can even think not to wear anything right they are called as free thinkers yes please live as a free thinker and go to hell that's exactly what bible is saying what why because they don't like anybody to govern them control them no law no commandment and these are the people who go to jail they end up in jail why because they hate law they cannot be governed by law why because they are free thinkers they have freedom to do anything they want yeah and uh, please don't get into such doctrines please don't get into you know problems that uh, that is overwhelming that misleads you that's the reason these kind of sessions are important to give you that enlightenment in your heart and help you to drag out of the dark situations that you are probably already into because why the spirit of antichrist is already at work there are enough number of doctrines there are enough number of churches cult churches that had been planted by the antichrist the spirit of antichrist and they carry the same bible kjv version okay and they speak about the same jesus but they will lead you into trap that is where jesus also told in matthew 24 yes about these false prophets and Paul spoke a lot about these prof false prophets. Peter also gave a doctrine. You don't understand exactly what to preach. Don't preach, right? This is exactly what is written in the Bible. And how do you know whether this is written in the Bible exactly the way he's telling me or not? For that, you need to be grounded and rooted in the Word of God. And we are exactly talking about these doctrines and these studies in detail. all right a warm welcome to the series where we are dealing with the body mind spirit and soul the four nomenclatures which constitutes and uh, and and builds the structure called as um, spiritual anatomy and spiritual anatomy is my own definition you search in the internet probably you will get different uh, meanings but then from the biblical standpoint this is how you could look upon and this spiritual anatomy is the one which governs and which controls the physical anatomy yes and one person is missing here his name is holy spirit or evil spirit and that person works with the spirit which is inside us through which we are breathing and about which we have spoken enough in this series i want you to go through the previous sessions and i'm not going to rewind but we are getting into the doctrinal study we are getting into the biblical study we are getting into spiritual study analysis as how we could get it all right in terms of our body mind spirit and soul and how we could be unified and united in one accord in one spirit in one body in one mind yeah and 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 do things in harmonized way and let there not be any war waging between um the mind and spirit why because as long as the spirit is going to be controlled by the holy spirit there are higher possibilities that you will end up um, having a terrible war with mind because body and mind they were in the practice of worldly principles and worldly doctrines they were soaked into the world and the worldly temptations if you how much ever you going to tell them one fine morning you wake up and you made a decision that yeah henceforth i am going to live according to the bible henceforth i am going to walk according to the principles of bible henceforth nothing else i am going to do i am going to say no to the past and everything but mind doesn't understand spirit makes the decision spirit is enlightened spirit is pulled itself from darkness spirit makes a firm and affirmative decision assertive decision that i am not going to go back to the past i'm dead to the past i'm born again second corinthians 5:17 and second corinthians 317 yeah where there is spirit there is liberty there is liberalization that's been pronounced and proclaimed to this spirit but how about the condition of your body and mind body and mind were used to this that's why you see lot of 
uh, people who are uh, redeemed from the the rehabilitation center or something like that they keep them right and they were redeemed from that uh, position or delivered from from that uh, uh, addiction drug addiction they will have a terrible struggle and i will tell you it will be so very pitiful to watch their situation your heart will melt their hands will shiver their lips will shiver they will their body will um, kind of uh, shrivel and um, they they won't be able to control and their head will ache their head will spin why because all these days their body and mind they were used to something and today that something is missing i'm talking about drug addiction as an example or people who are into adultery they just cannot live without prostitution or without adultery or something like that you know their body will demand and the body will try to wage war against the spirit and convince come on you cannot bind me in one day come on you cannot imprison me in one day why don't you give me some time why don't we gradually work on these these are the convincing things which the devil will bring in and government also right will uh, some of the states they have announced they will be winding up on this alcoholic um, situation and they have they would stipulate right 20 shops we will bring it to 10 10 shops we will bring it to 5 5 to 3 3 to 2 2 to 1 1 to 0 this is how they gradually wind up why because <clears throat> they want all the people to slowly get away and therefore they don't see the impact this is the worldly principle this is the worldly way of dealing with addictions because they are worldly but what is the spiritual way of dealing with things and what will a spirit filled person and how will be his reaction or how will be his method of dealing with the same addiction he deals it with a powerful word right called as repentance and the power of repentance is it happens instantaneously it happens immediately and it doesn't take any steps to gradually wind up things because second corinthians 5:17 will be at work immediately a person who decides spiritually with the help of his spirit and holy spirit governing admonishing the person who walks by the spirit or who is being who's been led by the spirit will clearly understand what it cost for jesus would have got a clear understanding insight on how much it cost for jesus to shed his precious blood and purchase us all for a price and i did not come for free and all these things he would have read he would have revised he would have mastered he would have consulted people and he would be thoroughly convinced and that person on a fine day he says i repent and i feel sorry probably he will end up sobbing the whole night or the whole day but he makes a decision he makes a decision saying that i'm giving up this i'm dead to the past and therefore that's a symbolic representation of getting into this water baptism right you are being dead to the past and you are born again many people think that oh when i go through the water baptism then i have something magically happens with me i will feel the power i will feel something rejuvenated and then i will get all charged up to live my life in biblical way absolute lie of the devil right that it's not it's other way around the day the, the day you feel all this fine in terms of your decision in terms of you repenting enough and you are firm i said that affirmative decisions you make that's when you need to surrender your body and mind and spirit to go through this water baptism as a sign of respect as a symbolic representation of you of the decision what you had already made and you want to live according to that doctrine you according to that uh, belief according to that decision therefore you symbolically you are symbolically going and representing and then you are going to live your life in literal tense in practical tense in reality that is theory water baptism is theory and the real way of living life is practical you will continue to live among the sinners this world is full of sinners bible says that and you will continue to live in this world which is technically ruled by the devil and he is the ruler of the world for some time god allowed him it's not that he created but in that genesis 3:15 and 17 there is something happens about which i have explained and there was a argument probably that took place between god and him and therefore he was given the powers 
because he challenges you take away everything from me obviously you are the winner god why don't you give me the powers and then see what happens with your creations now i am the winner isn't it i have deceived adam and eve successfully now therefore give me the power and you see my game do you have the guts do you have the courage he challenges god and god god is scared of anything okay fine take your power but whoever is going to be on my side they are going to be on my side that's why jesus always mentions those who ever have ears let them hear my sheep will hear the voice of the shepherd and he is the good shepherd himself and god is not worried about the numbers today 99 percentage and above they are on devil's side either they are in entertainment atheism or blindfold deception christians i am saying in deception or being misled yeah are being convincingly blindfolded they are backslidden they are not able to overcome these are the kind of people or non christians who have gladly gone and accepted other gods and goddesses and submitted their lives to idols you will see all of these people your the summation is going to be greater than 99 percentage and who is the winner technically from quantitative basis it is the devil right but god is least bothered about these numbers because god is not a politician who is creating that vote bank therefore he can have the majority in heaven he is least bothered about these people those who want to be un- filthy let them be filthy those who want to be dirty let them be dirty those who want to be unrighteous let them be unrighteous and go to hell that those three words are missing actually <laughs> okay because why you made the choice you are very happy going hell and burning in the lake of fire so what for me i'm okay is god losing anything <clears throat> absolutely no so that's why these kind of sessions are very important that you get that enlight- enlightenment in your heart in your spirit and you don't walk in darkness anymore and you fall in that simple one percentage that minority which gets into heaven and god is definitely more than happy to live with that one percentage rather than the 90 percentage of wolves and cunning people and wicked people evil people demonic forces they have no entry in eternity and the sad truth here is many people think those 99 percentages are murderers sorcerers witches black magicians um thieves stealers you know cheaters liars or maybe they include even angry people this is how they understood the bible no that is an there is a big list which you are skipping that's exactly what we had been dealing in this session and also in many other sessions passive sense series we have done and we have spoken almost 20 sessions there and we had dealt with many many other topics which is described in second timothy 3 3 1 to 9 and mark 7 21 22 and then um 20 21 22 and then galatians 5 17 to 21 yeah there is a big list given over there and even if you slip up in one of those you're going to be deceived and those who are already in christendom doing wonderful ministry for god and all that watch out you could end up in the false prophet category you did not take care of your own body mind spirit and soul whereas you were so busy in taking care of others technically speaking you were pharisees judgmental on others and always finger pointing at others always pointing at your brother speck hey there is a speck in your eyes in your eyes you have the speck too but you have no made no efforts to pull that out yeah you don't want to is another reason or maybe you are so busy you got all worked up and you 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 don't even have time to focus on or analyze on who you are all right that's why these sessions are important that takes you on the side of um you know brightness and glory all right so welcome to this lesson number 25 you can imagine if i were to talk on a single subject for 25 classes and we are still only half done technically i do not know how many more classes i will need and I'm, i'm not bothered i keep telling you this i'm definitely going to spend enough time and ensure that we are all aligned from the biblical standpoint okay the last session we had been dealing um, from i mean studying from the life of moses and we briefly touched upon philippians chapter 2 and we just started to discuss about the life of jesus and both of these we are connecting to one parameter called a spirit of humility spirit of humility right to many people 
the spirit concept doesn't get into their head holy spirit it gets into their head holy spirit means lot of power he gives i can do be a miracle worker i can be a prophet i can be a prophetess and i could uh, the dem demons will tremble at me i can free the people from bondage of sins uh, i can be a, i can be filled with the discerning spirit spirit of knowledge wisdom will be given to me all people will queue up and they want to consult me because i will be given that wisdom and knowledge yes and discerning spirit too yes and i will be a kind of uh, instrument for god to heal and many people don't even this understanding that all these gifts are given for other people's usage you could still be in sickness but that won't uh, god won't heal it up philip you know not philip uh, paul was a great example right the messenger of satan was sent and he had sickness in his eyes and god never healed it he said that no my grace is sufficient for you but when paul walks over many people touches their his apron his shadows fell on somebody uh, and he somebody caught up his dress and everyone got healed miracles were taking place like anything and he woke up a person who was dead falling from the third floor he presented him alive and again the sermon continues such a mighty miracle worker for god and also by his spirit he was caught up all the way to paradise comes back but this disease or sickness god said no i'm not taking it only that will keep you humble that's exactly what we are dealing it's called a spirit of humility two aspects one god allows certain things in your life to break you right because you are a hard nut to crack and god is not able to use you mightily in his ministry or according to his divine will and plans yes and that's how we ended up discussing about moses and his lifestyle and how long it took for god to crack him because he was such a hard nut until 8 years and uh, then how god mightily used him and there wasn't anyone like moses there could be anyone like moses god himself certifies gives that contact certificate in deuteronomy 34 and then god buries him and he conducts a funeral ceremony in that funeral ceremony only god and his angels were there <laughs> can you imagine nobody allowed except god is there any funeral that you have heard ever and what was the life of moses before he, he turned 80 miserable life but this moses was mightily used by god why because of one reason he was a very very humble man and this is exactly what we are going to discuss because to many people this humility and humbleness uh, translates to something like outer up, outward appearance right the if i wear a white and white i will be all humble no color clothes humble no necklace no um, golden ring or no nothing like that no gold on my body humble yeah i don't smile i'm a very serious brother and humble they call such people are uh, you know falling under this humble category and i will have my old bicycle and uh, two rubber uh, slippers and uh, one two clothes one i wash and one i wear and uh, you know i have money still i will have to live in poverty i have to eat only two meals per day and uh, if the cloth is torn i will stitch and wear it until it is completely torn and everything inside is visible outside these are all the human imaginations and perceptions which got built over a period of time and they are completely out of their mind and they are completely out of bible this is not at all what is been explained in bible and about which i have discussed in multiple other sessions because bible definitely expects us to be prosperous materially and physically that is in your good health and spiritually 1 john 3 to says that right may it be all well with you my son be prosperous and be in good health and you take any old testament verses that will definitely talk about the materialistic blessing and the health and all that and you talk about new testament it is talking much about the spirit right how healthy your spirit must be how healthy your spiritual anatomy that structure should be how strong it should be yeah these four nomenclatures which which constitutes to build this structure of spiritual anatomy right the yeah, new testament is more of that sort but if only the spirit related matters were important on old testament not at all important you have to all live in poverty like the example i told old bicycle and two rubber uh, slippers and 
uh, even if it is uh, you know the slipper is worn out and you don't have money to buy another slipper you walk in barren foot this is the kind of imagination what people created but bible never spoke if that was the intention of god he would have he would have erased all the old testament books your bible will contain only 27 books yes and even in the new testament i can show you enormous number of verses which talks about your materialistic prosperity and i am not against it because why for each and everything you need money even to buy food to feed your family to educate your children to get your children married to pay your house rent right or you want to buy a house you want to repay your loan pay the emis yes you have a car you need money to fill up the fuel right or you need money to buy a car you need to buy new new set of clothes new pair of socks whatever needed you need money money is i'm not saying money is everything money has to be money is a bad master but a good servant that is a proverb right as long as you abide in this principle and you walk according to these kind of ideologies and and and, and i'm not saying philosophical but these kind of doctrines money cannot dominate you money cannot mislead you and you will never be a spendthrift you will never waste money god's resources you will buy everything that is needed for you and your family and plus you will also be a very good uh, charitable worker where you will also help empathize and sympathize people and you will help them and even to help people you need money right come brother let's pray praying is sympathizing after praying you put your hands right into your pocket and you pull up that money and give it into your uh, and what is it place it into your brother's hand and say that please go and buy all of this empathizing and sympathizing is bible for empathizing you need money to take care of you and others what where i started was never ever misinterpret this humility and connected with poverty many people think rich people you you are you are too rich huh? that means you are not humble you can never be humble because why jesus said even a camel can enter through the eye of the needle but a rich man cannot get in there which rich man he was talking about about that rich young ruler as an example right who was so attached to the money and i think probably was in the business of counting his money every day or taking uh, what to say the stocks of his assets livestock right and everything he would take and he would merry and enjoy and be glad oh see how i'm rich he was so attached and that's why he went back and he never came back to god peter went back and he came back sorry peter went away and he came back denying jesus three times he went away and he got into his fisherman business fishing business again and then he came back to jesus right the woman who was stoned to almost stoned to death went away and she came back and she became a disciple so many examples we can see but that guy never came back why he is his attachment with on money was so much and that is why god said jesus said such a person who is having so much of attachment towards materialistic uh pleasures and materialistic attitude they have nothing to do with in the with the kingdom of god the doctrines are going to stand far away from them they can never get closer to god they are spiritually dead people but then he never said hey you know you you know um, you you should sell all that you have and beg on the streets no that was not the intention he said hey rich and ruler go ahead and sell everything that you have and give it to the poor but by by saying that he doesn't mean to say yeah he needs to starve keep whatever is necessary for you and then sell everything that is unnecessary where your heart is attached you break that bonding and follow me yes and he never followed this is these are the kind of people who are not humble enough humble means what yeah humbling yourself means what tell me spirit of humility means what what is a simple one word definition obedience you obey the law of god you are going to be abiding in the laws and commandments of god and even in your dreams you will never think of violating the principles of god the doctrines of god that's a simple definition behind the spirit of humility and that was with jesus more than any 
of the disciples or the saints you might see in the old testament every one of them would have gone uh, through their bad ways of living their lives and um, the lifestyle that was against the word of god they were rebels at some point of time they were disobedient at some point of time yeah knowingly unknowingly is a different category yeah and they didn't understand they were living in deception god had to free them but jesus was the only person who walked in the spirit of humility and therefore he had nothing to fix and that's the reason we picked up this topic why because this is to deal with unity in spiritual anatomy through humility your spiritual anatomy will never be able to work in harmonized manner right they will never be unified and that's why i gave you an example and i told how this body and mind which are soaked in the worldly pleasures and worldly passions for such a very long time such a long tenure would never ever be able to understand what the spirit is saying yeah now the spirit is someone like lot who had got all good attitude and all that and although he was re- born again in the spirit and he says come let us all flee away the body and mind are the, are like the son in law saying that hey come on a lot do not pretend right we don't understand your language only yesterday night we had been spending time together in pub and in the prostitute uh, prostitute's house and after that we went and you know were flirting with some women and and we were having uh, you know got to get we were into homosexuals and stuff like that today you are pretending as if you are a saint come on don't joke lot but actually the lord guy uh, had always that guilt in his heart because he thought that he should have stayed with abraham and he used to spend time in the open square the whole night and that's when he got to meet those three uh, angels of god father son and the holy spirit that's the representation right and then he took them right and and they also know that lord would be spending time there and that's why they came at that time from morning till evening he would be working and evening he would just depart in loneliness I guess he was in distress. Whereas these guys never understood the original position of Lot. Yes, and that's why the war, war there will be no unity. They will not work in a unified manner. There will be no harmony in delivering things. Always fighting, 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 fighting. Have you seen husband and and wives some homes? Oh my goodness, the fight will never end. Yeah, and he will end up slapping, and she will end up. throwing masala powder or chili powder on his face i have seen many homes like this they fight in such and i have heard few of them too i witnessed few of them too and not not, not between me and my wife <laughs> the moment i say i witnessed don't imagine oh this guy had gone through similar things not never uh, but then i have heard many people ending up with such quarrels and fights i would always imagine this is how the spirit and flesh would be fighting that is body and mind and the reason when i analyzed this was the reason now when this unity happens whenever your spirit is very very humble and the body and mind will start realizing yes this guy is real he is true and he's telling us things for our own good because why we three body mind and spirit are ultimately going to help this inner man soul to land up at the right place and that's paradise and then heaven philippians chapter 2 and verse 1 therefore if there is any consolation in christ if any comfort of love there are see bible is always conditional i keep telling you this right there are a lot of conditional statements because it starts with um, you know if uh, and uh, if you do mostly this ifs if you do it if you are falling by if you worship me then i will do all of this and all that i think using this only there is if end of clause in the computer science world and people understand this conditional statement conditional statements itself were introduced from bible today it may look like computer programming but it was i mean it was it, it got originally evolved from bible no one can deny this right consolation is the comfort you feel when consoled in times of disappointment times of frustration times of hopelessness times when you where you felt uh, you were completely deprived ignored you are rejected you will be looking for comfort 
yeah but you don't get even a single soul standing by your side that was the condition of that lady who stood there when all of them ganged up together and they were to stone this lady to death right and no one was there to support her not a single soul and that was her condition she was feeling all alone when jesus stood by her side and that's the character of jesus jesus is always on the side of those who are feeble why because it's easy for him to use them they're not hard nuts to crack yeah for jesus to work upon those feeble people who are lonely alone having lost i have nothing more to lose that lady who touched his garments and said that i have nothing more to lose let me do this with belief and faith and her faith healed her and jesus said power went of my body who touched me and disciples were astonished hey jesus what are you asking come on master every one of them are thronging on you and don't you feel that <laughs> therefore if there is any consolation in christ if any comfort of love see so many conditional statements right comfort of love when you get that comfort of love because you need to remember you were loved by god so much that he had sacrificed his only son and therefore amidst of terrible situations that had led you to disappointment that had left behind only frustrations you will be still able to have that comfort and that joy and that hope yeah if if any comfort of love if any fellowship of the spirit you see here fellowship of the spirit what does it mean fellowship between your body mind and the spirit because why spirit is already having fellowship with the holy spirit but it was never extended to these two um what is a nomenclatures that constitute to the spiritual anatomy but then after you are grounded and rooted in the word of god you have understood the gospel you have understood the love of christ and Uh, you have seen that uh, how much it cost for uh, jesus to beget you as his own as his own um, brother and god accepts accepts you as his own child then you have been rewarded with royal priesthood and i mean with the title of entitlement of royal priesthood uh, from philippians 2:5 sorry 1 peter 2:8 you can take and read right now you have all the comfort right if any fellowship of the spirit if any affection and mercy affection in christ and you have accepted the mercy of christ fulfill my joy by being like minded having the same love being of one accord of one mind yeah jesus leaves behind or i would say paul is talking about working in a in a harmonized manner in a unified manner and he's typically talking about the members of the spiritual anatomy and that also applies to the members in the church right in in, in any church you go there will be politics there will be egos there will be competition there will be always um, you know two gangs being two or three gangs being split and they fight with each other and pastor is not able to perhaps assuming pastor is a good pastor and he's not able to handle any of these then he resigns his job and he goes then people are readily waiting to grab that position yes and jesus was saying i'm going to be crucified after i'll go to jerusalem and i'll be handed over and the son of man will have to go through these tortures and they said jesus you keep walking we will come behind you and you know what they were discussing this 12 guys who's going to replace jesus yes who's going to get into the shoes of jesus their level of understanding was only that much they were such they were so immature bunch of disciples and they were not to be blamed because why holy spirit were not was not given to them and um, they were not born again in spirit and truth yes let nothing be done philippians chapter 2 verse 3 let nothing be done through selfish ambitions or conceit yes these are all called as passive sins about which we can again read from second timothy 3 i keep telling you this 
Yeah, I'm turning my Bible very quickly to Second Timothy. Second Timothy three. Um, you will see lots of things. Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Uh, I'm reading few things from there. Right, all of these are tightly intercoupled with something called as selfish ambitions or conceit. Yeah, but in lowliness. Yeah, conceitness. Uh, conceit is also something similar to um, prejudice, but then it it is to do more with that excessive pride, superiority complex. Right, you have that superiority complex that. You know how long I had been in this church? 30 long years. This guy came only day before yesterday and he's behaving so smart. Go stand in the last row or take the last seat in the last bench. Something like that. You try to tame somebody. You try to rule over somebody because of your selfish ambitions and conceit and excessive pride and yeah, self prejudice Then you are not having the spirit of humility. You are not unified or united with the holy spirit and you are governed and ruled by the evil spirit bible gives us this commandment right let nothing be done through selfish ambitions or conceit but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself this is very very similar to the second commandment love your neighbor as yourself right you will never esteem you will never treat others or you will not look down on others. Jesus never looked down on anyone. Yeah, but he treats every one of them calling friends, friends. And after he was resurrected, he says, brothers, I'm your elder brother. You're all my younger brothers. Come, we are all equal. Spirit of humility. But in lowliness of mind, lowliness means what? I told you, right? Many people read this verse and they will buy a bicycle. They have money. What they will do? They will keep it somewhere and still they will starve. Why? Because starving means lowliness and humble, humble humility and humble attitude and all that. This is their own assumption. Lowliness of mind. And what are we talking here? Body, mind, spirit and soul. Clear? Lowliness is, see, two things Bible strongly encourages and strongly um, what is say prescribes number one is renewal of mind renewal of mind can happen only if the transformation of spirit takes place spirit makes its decision very clearly that i'm going to know never live my life this way i'm going to say no to sin and then renewal of mind takes place but the mind is not all right why because the mind fellow is soaked so much in in the worldly pleasures and he cannot come out of that instantaneously it takes time however the mind is renewed and the second aspect is if you have said no to the selfish ambitions, meaning to fulfill the lusts of your uh, flesh and the passions of the world and all the habitual practices you had been involved, yeah, committing sins and uh, yeah, and, and always kicking Holy Spirit out of your body, that is your temple. Why? Because you are self-centric, selfish ambitions. And by doing all of that, you will be in excessive pride too. You will have that feeling, elevated feeling, esteem, feel, you know, feeling of uh, super esteem and no realization, no sense of realization. But when you walk in the lowliness of mind, in humility, the Bible recommends, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. You give glory to God, you give glory to Jesus and also you will learn to appreciate others. Although they are, they, they, they would be nowhere close to your talent, but then you will not take it so very, uh, what I say, you will not elevate your standards or you will not exaggerate your skills to others. Why? Because you definitely know you are nothing before God's talent. And even now also you are performing it's because of his grace, extended grace, favor of God. Yes. And therefore, how your heart is going to be humble you get multiple promotions double promotions triple promotions nothing can change your attitude none of these could change your attitude it means nothing to you by because you know the truth and who is behind your success who granted you the success and therefore you'll be a blessing to your company you'll be a very assertive person 
Yes. Why? Because you will do things. You will speak things. You will react to things under one concept, one principle, lowliness of your mind. <laughs> Don't you think a person who is going to walk in this lowliness of mind is always going to embrace the spirit and kiss the spirit saying, what you told was right because I know your teacher is Holy Spirit and he's my master too. Therefore, now I understand. Once upon a time, this mind and body used to rage war against the spirit. Now they say we are good friends. In fact, they would say we are married to each other. We are like a couple. And they both listen to the Holy Spirit. And spirit gets very successful in coaching this body and mind. And they work harmonized. Right? Let each okay, let more let's move on, right? You understand, right? Let each esteem others better than himself. Why you you end up esteeming others? You are a motivator, you are such an encouraging brother, you are hope to the hopeless. When people talk to you, they have the confidence in them. You are the reason behind your talks are like that. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests but also for the interests of others. We are living in the kind of world where you will definitely see people are absolutely selfish, right? Whether they have that little benefit only, then they will say hello to you. Else this fellow won't even look at, at his, his face, although they were neighbors for 20 years now. Yeah, they're co-workers for, what, a long time now, 15, 20 years now. They don't look at each other, but then, if there is a demand, if there is a need, this guy had uh, to acquire from that fellow or consult him, take his help. But then he will say, hey, sir, good morning. How are you doing? Huh? Come, let's have coffee. Have you seen people just coming like chimney on changing colors and they come and you'll be wondering. And you, you will not be wondering. You'll definitely know that guy needs something. Correct, no? Because why? You are also like him. Therefore, you understand his language better than any. <laughs> no, don't count yourself as that saintly brother with that saintly countenance. No, you are, you are definitely one of those. Let each one of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. If you don't follow or if you don't fall by these principles and doctrines, you can be very sure that you don't even have one percentage of spiritual deeds in you and Holy Spirit is definitely not living in you. Selfishness is something which definitely bible doesn't tolerate god god is not able to tolerate why because the more you are blessed the more you are the more it is expected um, you know from from heavens that you be you be a blessing to others you will lead others and in fact the very uh, reason for you to be blessed spiritually material is because you're going to serve others you're blessed with these gifts you are blessed with this prosperity Yes, absolutely. You can take for your need, of course. Bible doesn't deny that, right? You you need to take care of your living too, yes. But you have a major responsibility. That's only like one-fourth of what you have. But the remaining three-fourth belongs to the rest, belongs to the mankind. This is the way how you need to look at everything, materialistic or spiritual. You have been created for a purpose, and the purpose is to serve others, serve the mankind. Imagine every one of us walk with such an attitude. There will be no envy. There will be no bitterness. There will be no hatred. There will be no competition. There will be no politics. There will be no violence. There will be no bloodshed. There will be no murmurers, gossipers, quarrels. Wow. This place already becomes heaven. God wouldn't have to create another heaven, isn't it? Since all of these are missing here on earth, Jesus is constructing a mansion for the last 2,000 years. And he says, I will come and take you there. And he was very confident making this statement 2,000 years ago that no way <laughs> such a thing is going to take place on earth because the ruler of the earth will be devil. And it is not at all easy to crack that fellow because he's devil. And he loves to be, you know, to, 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 to stay like a devil. or he does, He's not willing to lose his flavor, the demonic flavor. And that's why... Even in the white throne judgment, Revelation 20.10, there is no judgment for this guy. Why? Because he's already judged. Because why? He is very clear with this decision. I will remain as devil, I will live as devil, and lie as, die as devil. 
but people like you and me although we are given that free will but we have that judgment course but how we are going to be judged again the visibility is given widely open in in from the from the bible and if you read the bible carefully you will clearly understand that god made everything open and clear how you are going to be judged what are the parameters you are going to be judged he made it quite visible transparent yet we walk like fools you understand what is the reason behind this session where we are dealing with the spirit of humility and what this humility demands and how one one could call himself or herself as i am that humble brother and humble sister you don't you lack on these concepts which we are described you lack in affection you lack in mercy yes you you don't have that like mindedness you are filled with selfish ambitions and desires and conceit superiority complex and pride excessive pride and you don't you always say you you restrain to something called as you know low lowliness of mind or renewal of mind what is the need i am all right yeah somebody comes to advise and tell you hey what you are doing is wrong you would say no no i am all right you mind your business you you are into involved in any of these and you are involved in only your interest and you are so selfish you will approach somebody only if there is an you are definitely not embracing something called as the spirit of humility christ is not in you christ like mindset is not in you holy spirit doesn't reign in you anymore yes and who is your governor clearly the evil spirit you are on devil side and such people right they not only mislead themselves they will also be a uh, what is it they leave they lead others into deception that's why jesus said hey it will be good for you to tie a milestone around your neck and jump into the water please don't come and disturb my children please don't mislead them some of the pastors they don't have humility i've seen them st- standing on the pulpit and cursing the believers in the church because the tithe collections were less by 20% you people are not giving god will curse you he will take away your job and he thinks he, because of his intercession with god all the members were blessed and all that where is the spirit of humility in that guy and tithe concept is definitely not according to the new testament it's uh, you have built your church on the belief and doctrines don't uh, doctrines that are based on jesus name and jesus blood there is no tithe concept free will offering and that you cannot just force people to give they they want to be cheerful givers you can talk about what it is to give and then again you are obliged you are definitely responsible to give that account back to the members this much was collected and now they do it in csi congregations and i like that i appreciate that they give that visibility complete transparency do you do that you don't do that so you don't give an account but do you really deserve to ask an account from those people saying that hey 10% what is your salary some churches are even asking them to produce the pay slips and therefore they calculate the 10% and you you got to give you can't believe this there are churches like that uh, who are you to take an account or give you know ask demand an account while you yourself are not transparent you are that person about whom jesus is talking in the book of luke you have a speck in your eye you hypocrite you're acting before god and you take that money and you buy that luxurious house and luxurious cars and best of the dresses and coat and suit and what not while these fellows poor fellows they are giving one tenth of their earning and their salary would be absolutely nothing and you demand and you threaten them you frighten them who are you firstly you are you are you are demonic and you are a devil by demon by yourself and second thing is you definitely have no spirit of humility in fact holy spirit is not in you and therefore there is no spirit of humility and you are more focused on your own self interest your self provision yes you focus on your interests and the interests of others starving families are there families in poverty stricken are there families in debts are there family in sickness not able to pay the hospital bills are there family which needs money to go through the surgery fine you collect the tithes but are you provisioning money your providential hands 
Is it meeting the needs of the people? Are you serving them? No. They buy big building buildings or they buy big land and they start building and the land will be registered in this pastor's son's name or wife's name and nonsense, absolute rubbish. You are that false prophet, brother. Yeah, you can be angry with me. Actually, I don't care. Sorry. I'm telling it for your good and you have some sense of realization, realize and same to the believers. Watch out what your pastor is doing. Watch out how they handle money part. Not just money. What is the position of their attitude? What is their mentality looking like? Always fulfilling their self-interest and visions and they don't consult the members of the church. They don't do good for the church and then there is something wrong. You find a better place. It will be far better for you to stay with mainline churches and traditional churches who gives their transparency with the little money they have. Okay, it's not about money. Money, I took one example. But then there are many other factors like um, you're so hungry for power and then you will go to any extent to fulfill your self-interest and self-ambition and you will join hands with some dirty rogues and you will kick that guy out of his post and then you will go and grab that post. Yeah, you will create all false accusations and tantrums and heresies. Heresies, you will speak about that guy and you will be a blasphemer. You, you are involved in any of these? You are the person who don't have the humility. When you don't have humility, nothing works in unity within your spiritual anatomy. In fact, you are not spiritual at all. You are demonic. Yes, none of these things you will find in Jesus. You take him as your role model. You analyze from his lifestyle. Never would Jesus demand anything from anyone. He would go easy on sinners, but then he will give them a warning, stern warning. Hey, watch out. If you don't repent today, if you don't give away this sin today, a worse thing will cling you. But you are forgiven right now. You are freed. You are healed. And he will bless them, pray for them. But then he won't go hard against them. He would, do, he would still respect their free will. He would give them that liberty to decide things on their own. But he will tell them what the, the, the difference between the good and bad, the evil and knowledge. Yeah. That's exactly how this person who walks in the spirit of humility, they will tend to behave. All right. With this, we will close this session and we will continue from verse number 5 all the way to 18 in our next session and I think I should be able to finish in our next session not the series sorry <laughs> the Philippians chapter 2 meditation from the life of Jesus the spirit of humility I've not even come to Jesus I'm just setting the context from verses 1 to 4 Philippians 2 very very important chapter to learn from the lifestyle of Jesus Heavenly Father we want to thank you for this time the opportunity and the fellowship thank you for shedding light upon us and Thank you for getting us by your side. And thank you for, Lord, giving us this assurance that when we walk in light, we're going to step inside the kingdom of heaven. And our positions are going to be big. Help us not to walk as self-centric people and help us to be rather be filled with the spirit of humility. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Please subscribe to our channel. Get access to all our playlists and videos and Please listen and stay blessed and uh, share it with your friends and relatives. God bless and soon I will meet you uh, and see you in lesson number 26.